Hello, everyone. Welcome to my talk. My name is Jing Rao. I'm a postdoc from the SN Department of Max Planck Institute of SASMAT. Today, I would like to show you part of my PhD work that I also conducted in this institute. As we might know, the development of hydrogen economy is critical as one well of the strategies to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases. As a clean energy carrier, Hydrogen has been applied to different fields, including industry, household, and transportation. However, the materials in contact with hydrogen might suffer from a sudden brittle failure. That's why in this study, we investigate hydrogen-metal interactions and how they influence the mechanical behavior of ion-based alloys. Once entering the metal, hydrogen can get transported and get trapped at various types of microstructural features. The deeply trapped hydrogen has a limited impact on crack propagation as it tends to stay still. However, the mobile hydrogen, the diffusive or lightly trapped hydrogen, has a higher risk. Since even at room temperature, the mobile hydrogen prefers to migrate to stress-concentrated regions, accelerating the failure. Consequently, understanding the role of mobile hydrogen is critical. To experimentally study mobile hydrogen, in-situ setup is required to provide continual hydrogen charging, preventing hydrogen desorption during testing. Nano indentation and related techniques have been used to introduce localized deformation in small volume. Therefore, we can study the hydrogen effect on specific microstructural features, such as dislocations, green boundaries, precipitates, or interfaces. Today, I will focus only on the hydrogen interaction with dislocations and try to answer the question of what is the impact of hydrogen on dislocation mechanics. Here is how the in-house developed setup looks like inside the nanoindentation chamber. Instead of immersing completely into the electrolyte, as you can see from the schematic diagram. In our setup, the hydrogen is cathodically generated at the bottom of the sample and permeates through it. In the meantime, the mechanical test will be conducted on the front side of the spaceman. Thus, the sample surface would remain pristine, allowing for further microstructure characterization with high resolution. In our system, we are currently using different mechanical methods such as nano indentation, nano scratch, pillow compression, and beam bending tests. Today, our focus will be put on the nano indentation method. The localized deformation can be introduced using a nano sized indenter tip. Therefore, the green interior and even green boundary can be investigated. Here is the typical low displacement curve we can obtain using nano indentation. From this curve, we can get the popping load. Since the material we use has a low dislocation density and large green size, this excursion is caused by the nucleation of dislocation, which can be used to calculate the maximum shear stress of the material. Besides that, we can also get the hardness and elastic modulus evolution curve as a function of the displacement based on the classical Oliver and Fa theory. The material we use is model ion chromium alloy with different chromium content. The alloy has a single BCC structure with a large grain size of millimeter scale. It also has a low dislocation density of less than 10 power of 12 per square meters. They have a representative and simplified microstructure of ferritic steels using in industry. In terms of hydrogen-related property, it has a high hydrogen diffusivity and low hydrogen solubility. With this property, we are able to use the material and the unique backside hydrogen charging setup with specific charging protocol to study the impact of mobile hydrogen. The effect of deeply trapped hydrogen can be excluded by performing the precharge step. After releasing lightly trapped hydrogen, reference hardness and elastic modulus values can be obtained. Afterward, we charge the sample with stepwise increased potential. In the end, 
we stop the hydrogen supply. In the meantime, all the mechanical data is collected. We can see the Young's modulus remain constant as the hydrogen concentration is not enough to influence the elastic behavior of this BCC alloy with relatively low hydrogen solubility of less than 10 ppm. You can also see that once the hydrogen was introduced, the hardness of the sample increased. When we apply a higher potential, the current density increases, resulting in a higher amount of hydrogen supply. The hardness continues to go up. In the end, when we stop the hydrogen charging, we can see the hardness drops back to the reference value. The hardness is actually has an intimate correlation with the diffusion behavior of mobile hydrogen. Considering the hydrogen flux permeates through the sample unidirectionally, it hits us. Could we use the hardness value to calculate the hydrogen diffusion coefficient? The answer is yes. Based on the fixed law, the hydrogen diffusion coefficient can be calculated using the logger time, which is an indication of the establishment of steady-state hydrogen flux. In order to validate the method, we need to know the hydrogen diffusion coefficient in those alloys using the standard method. In cooperation with the GR department, we are able to measure the hydrogen diffusion coefficients using the Kelvin probe based permeation technique in two different alloys. When we turn the sketch upside down, you will find both apparatus share the same mechanism. The difference is that instead of measuring the hydrogen content in plating layer on sample surface, in our case, we measured nano hardness. The results coincide very well with the same magnitude and tendency for iron chromium with 16 and 21% of chromium. Validating the approach using nano hardness to calculate the hydrogen diffusion coefficient. Back to the hardness evolution curve, the hardness increases and eventually stabilizes at a plateau. This plateau corresponds to the steady state balance of the absorbed and desorbed hydrogen flux with specific current density. The average hardness value is determined from the plateau. For the same grain orientation of 100 with the same applied current density of 3 mA per square centimeter at the highest hardness increase, the hardness enhancement in iron chromium 21 is larger than the iron chromium 16. The question would be how much hydrogen can be absorbed in these alloys with the help of MA department colleagues we are able to measure the hydrogen amount within the alloys using the TDS measurement, which follows the same tendency. That is, the alloy with high chromium content absorbed higher amount of hydrogen. In addition to the hardening effect, a reduction in popping load is observed in the initial part of the load displacement curve. This coincides well with defectant theory. The reduction in popping load can be attributed to the decrease of free energy necessary for dislocation nucleation during hydrogen charging. Additionally, in cooperation with our CM department colleagues, we are currently investigating the possibility of nanohydrides formation on the strain. As both popping load reduction and hardening effect appears in this alloy in the presence of hydrogen, we would like to know what happened for the microstructure evolution. Therefore, we cut the cross-section TM foil underneath the indents for analysis using Brightfield STM. We can clearly see the lamella after hydrogen charging shows a higher dislocation density. This difference in dislocation density between these two conditions can be quantified of 24% increase and utilized to model the hardness versus displacement curve as proposed by Durst. However, the observed hardness enhancement cannot be fully explained by the increase in dislocation density alone. An additional hydrogen-induced distress contributes to this effect, which may be associated with largest friction. Using this model, we are able to quantify the value to be 50 MPa. As a summary, a normal backside in situ hydrogen charging nano indentation setup is developed and we validate the calculation of hydrogen diffusion coefficient based on the mobile hydrogen. 
In this study, we focus on iron chromium alloys with low dislocation density and large grain size. Within our research group, we are extend our investigations to materials with higher dislocation density and smaller grain size. Additionally, our research has expanded to more complex commercial alloys, including pipeline steel and politic steel, among others. Our ultimate goal is to gain a deeper understanding of hydrogen interactions with various microstructure features, providing guidelines for the design of hydrogen tori materials. With this, I would like to thank you all for your attention. 